Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my RPG series. In this episode, we will be looking at how we can expand our gameplay tag system to add stacks. Now, a container which contains a tag, you only have it or you don't. It doesn't keep track of how many you have in it. But there might be situations when you may want to have a record of keeping track of how many times you were added a tag, for example. So let's say that you had a debuff tag that said you were burning. Uh, maybe having three of those had some consequence. Maybe the, the burning became more uh, severe or something along that nature. Or maybe you have some kind of corruption debuff and reaching a certain amount of stacks of it leads to you losing the game or, or something of, of that nature. The, the uses are limitless, essentially. So this is a bit of functionality that I feel is pretty useful actually uh, to implement and add. So going to our gameplay tags uh, blueprint component, uh, let's add the ability to add a stack. So we'll create a function we'll call add stack. And what we want to do or what we will be getting is we will be getting a tag. So we'll type in gameplay and add gameplay tag as our input and we'll say this is our tag to add just like we did before when we added the tags in here we want to somehow keep track of what tags we have and how many we have them and the way to do this is to create a new variable and we can call it uh, stacked tags and we'll go over here and we'll choose something like, uh, let's pick name. And then we'll go and click over here for the variable and we choose a map. Now what we have here, and by default we get an integer here, which is suiting our needs very well, is a uh, two part array where the first column here represents a key and the second column represents the value for that key. This works very well for us because we have a gameplay tag, which will be a unique identifier in the type of like, for example, state.dead or state.stunned or something like that. And the whole name there becomes the unique identifier, the key for this. The integer in this case will represent how many stacks we actually have. So, Pretty straightforward, I think. Let's move on with it. So we'll take our tag and we'll actually make it. Um, can, there's something called get tag name, which creates a uh, f name of this tag. And now we can take our map over here and we can say we want to find, which will take a name. So we can take the tag that we have here and we can now match against our current uh, stacked tag uh, map essentially. The result we get from this is as you see an integer and a boolean. The integer here will represent the value for this key. So what we can do here is we can drag out a plus and say int plus int and say one. The reason for this is we're adding a stack here currently. So whatever value we have here we will add one to. Now in case we don't actually find a row in here it will return zero and we'll just add one to it making it one stack so that works fine for us we also want to store this for a moment or maybe we don't need to never mind i think we'll be fine without actually so what we can do now is if we take our uh, map over here and we'll type in i believe it's add we have the ability now to add a row here and the row we want to add is our key from over here and we'll make it reroute a little bit so it's a bit cleaner and the value we want to set is what we have calculated here with the plus one and then we just want to hook it up over here and then we'll reroute this node as well so it's a little bit cleaner like so 
So now we're essentially saying whatever we have, add one to it. So if we didn't have it before, we just add it. If we had it before, we will write it over with a new uh, value. And then we'll return like so. Compile, save, and then we'll do the same thing. So we'll just do the same thing as we did when we were creating add tag and remove tags. We'll just duplicate this and we'll rename it to remove remove stack don't know why i had so much trouble with that now this will become a little bit more complicated but not much what we will do is we need to do the same thing we get a, a tag in here we want to rename it to tag to remove and we get the name we find it in our existing tags and we say that value we want to decrement so in this case we have an add here so we'll just remove that and it replace it with a subtraction like so and after that we add it in here so like we talked about before if we have a value here we will now be overwriting it with the new value so we will just be decrementing whatever we have saved before the problem here is that we can run into a situation where we have actually decreased it to zero or essentially below zero if we're not keeping track of it and that's what we want to actually do so what we will be doing is we'll make ourselves some space so after we have actually subtracted over here we'll drag off like so and we'll drag off from this uh, new calculated integer and we'll type in a clamp We'll say that the only values that we are allowing is minimum zero and maximum something high. So something like, let's say 999. This will then promote to a local variable, because local because we don't need to keep track of it outside of this function. So we'll do like so, and then we'll hook it up to the add over here. And then we'll, we can actually, let's see if I can clean this up like so. So now we have hooked up the, the new local variable here. We can rename the local variable to local. I tend to like to have as a prefix. So I always know that it's a local variable, even though it's super clear because you see it here on the here on the local variables, but still local new stack amount. So that's the value that we have calculated. But if we have zero stacks of something, why do we want to keep track of it? And that's a good point. We may not want to do that. So first of all, I will actually clean this up a little bit by moving it down so it's not intersecting with stuff so much. And after that, we'll take our local variable of the stacks. So if we actually have stacks here that are less or equal to zero, it should only be actually equal to zero due to our clamping, of course. But it's good to always do something like this rather than an exact value um, in case you are um, making an error somewhere it's easier to uh, catch it in that case and it might be hard to debug something and find like what's the error you just needed to match against a very specific value anyway tangent so anyway so the result of checking against this is what we're going to be using in the branch and if we have less than zero or zero or actually we have run out of stacks we don't have any stacks anywhere anymore of this tag then we want to go and do something here. And we may want to remove this from our map. So we'll drag out from our reroute node here and we'll type in remove. And we'll say the true statement here should be removing something, but we need to assign what that is. And that's this name that we have created from over here, the gameplay tag name. So that means we're removing it over here and then we're returning. And we may want to have a return over here for the false also. But we may want to make it easy for anybody who has called upon us to remove a stack to also see did this cause the stacks to get removed or not. So we'll add a variable here, an output of the type boolean, which we will name all stacks gone. And we'll say that it's true when we have removed the stacks and false when we have not. And that should be all we need for that. Now let's end with some debugging again, like we did before. 
to test our functionality, we will create a function which we will be calling print stack amount. And in this function, we will have a tag as an input. So gameplay tag. We'll just call it uh, tag to print. And what we want to do here is we want to take our tag. We want to make it a name. So we type the get tag name. And then we want to use our stacked tags to check against. So we'll say find just like we have in the past. We'll check against the name that this tag currently has. And then we say we want to print. So we right click print like so. To make it a little bit more readable, we can drag out from the print and say append. From the append, we can say something like, yeah, let's add another pin and have one pin say stack amount of and then uh, space and then we'll drag in our name to be like so so we will be having our tag name first and after that we want to know what amount of stacks we have so we drag out the variable or the value from our uh, map find there like so so now we will be printing that out and we can just return and let's see if this works now. We have, actually, we're not actually making use of it yet. We can build this in into functionality that we already have just to make it easy to follow along. So if we go to our add uh, tag, for example, after we have added a tag, we can just call our print stack amount like so. And again, this is things that we can just remove later on if we don't want to have it around, but it's good when we're developing to make sure that it's always working as intended. And going back to our remove tag, we'll do the same. So we'll have our uh, print stack amount over here. Make sure that it prints the same tag that we're trying to remove over here. So now we have the ability to add tags. We added that before, if we go to our third person character. We add it here with our one key. Let's add another one saying keyboard uh, three. And in this one, we'll say we want to have the gameplay tag component. And we want to say we want to call on remove tag. Like so. And we say we want to remove the tag that is called dead because that's the only tag we're actually having right now to work with. So let's see how this works out. So pressing our two key, it says we have no tag. Pressing the one key, it says stack amount of stack dead is zero. Pressing it again, it says zero. Pressing it again, it says zero. So it's obviously not printing it out like it should. This of course makes perfect sense if you have been eagle-eyed, because if we go to our blueprint component, we never actually call on our adding of stacks. So what we want to do is before we're calling our adding and removing, we want to remove our stacks like so. No, that's the wrong one. Sorry, my, my bad. We want to call on the remove stack one. My bad, my bad. Like so. And the tag we want to remove is this one. And we may want to reroute this a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to follow along, I think. Actually, we had that reroute node. We could have just done this. So we'll remove this one and drag it up like so. So now we have the ability here to remove gameplay tags. And this is where our stacks sort of come in handy because we don't want to remove it from the container unless we actually have removed all the stacks, right? So we'll actually plug in a branch in here and say that Based upon this functionality, we will either true, if it's all stacks are gone, we will remove the gameplay tag, or false, we will go and print our stack amount instead. So we'll reroute this a little bit. So then we'll go to our uh, adding of tags, give ourselves a little bit of space here as well. So we'll add a reroute over here, we'll add it over there. We'll call our add stack like so, we'll 
plug in our tag and then we'll send it over here. Now let's try this again. So pressing two, no tag. Pressing one, we have a stack of dead one. Pressing again, we have a stack of dead two. Pressing three, we have a stack of dead one and a stack of dead two. Adding another stack again and then pressing two, it says we have a tag found. So now we see that all of these different parts seem to be working in the very basic level at least. So that's good. And I think that's a good point to stop for today. Hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.